Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli and today I'm going to take you through the all new 2023 Airstream Baby 22FB. Now the Bambi is a series of trailers that comes in a 16RB, 19CB, 20FB and the 22FB. This trailer is 21 feet 11 inches from the ball to the back of the trailer. It's 8 feet wide. Interior width is 7 feet 7 inches. The exterior height to the top of the air conditioning is 9 feet 3 inches. Interior headroom is 6 feet 7 but to the bottom of the air conditioning it's 6 feet 4. The gross vehicle weight rating is 5,000 pounds. That's the maximum weight the trailer could be. The dry weight before options and cargo is 3,900 pounds and the hitch weight is only 500 pounds. This trailer is all made out of aluminum. Up front here you have rock guards that protect your front glass. They're called solar stone guards. You have a 3M film here that, to protect your body from chips, from rocks and debris. You have a rub rail protection on the bottom that wraps a side sheet to the underbelly. The underbelly is all enclosed, insulated and your tanks are heated for those unexpected drops in temperatures. You got LED marker lights all the way around. You got belt line protection that takes the side sheet to the bottom sheet. It's all buck riveted in place. This seals it up nice and pretty. I'm gonna take you around the outside of this trailer first and then we'll head on the inside and dive into the details there. This trailer has windows that Airstream purchases and installs in the holes. They are safety glass, they are tinted. You have a zip deep manual awning here with uh, Performer Tech's material, which is weather resistant. There is a procedure to operate this awning. We have some great service tech tips on our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe so you can check out how to operate the awning. Beautiful Bambi medallion. This is all made out of aluminum instead of a plastic sticker like most RVs have. A lockable, insulated, and weather sealed storage compartments on the outside. You can load in all your gear. Inside this compartment, there is a rubber mat on top of the vinyl flooring, which goes throughout the whole entire trailer. Below that is the subfloor, which is a transcore composite flooring, so it's not a wood material. So it's resistant to mold, mildew, rot. It also gives good screw retention for the bolts that go through the subfloor into the frame. There's also light inside this compartment, which illuminates it so you can see at night. You can put a lot of gear in here. In here are some tools. You have a tool for your stabilizer jacks. All four corners of this trailer have stabilizer jacks. Now they're not meant to level the trailer. They're meant to stabilize it so you don't get that rock and roll when you're walking around inside. So what you do is you go down, you find the jack, you stick your tool onto the end and you jack it down easily. We sell tools in our parts department so you can hook them up to a cordless drill if you wish. But you get those down to the ground, do about a quarter turn and that will take the bounce out of your walk and again they're all four corners. You have a multi tool here and you also have a tool to operate and deploy the awning. This is a one axle trailer and it's a rubber torsion axle. Has never just brakes. There are bearings here that have to be repacked at the, the service interval that Airstream recommends. You have 225-75 R15 load range E tires on board, which have a max inflate of 80 PSI. You want to make sure you check your lug nut torque periodically. There is a guide here on the side of the trailer we recommend you follow. So it's always important to lug nut torque and tire pressure. Check all that before your trips. You got another window over here. These windows operate. The bottoms kick out and have insect screens on them. Screen door detaches from the main door, swings around, fills that gap. This slides across so bugs don't get in here. It's all TIG welded, six rivets on each hinge. You got a grab handle to get in. Swings around, meets up with the entry door which is insulated. You have a lock for the handle. You have a lock for your deadbolt as well. And you have a window in the entry door. And these are keyed separately and they're not the common type of RV keys that most RVs use. There's also a latch to keep the door from swinging around on a windy day. 
Down here, there's a weight certification sticker. It just tells you the weights and measures that we spoke about before, but it's different than what your standard specs are because this one is a completed trailer that has the solar charging system, one option that's available. That lowered the cargo carry capacity from 1,100 pounds to 931 pounds. Over here, we have some grip tape at the entry door so you don't slip on your way out. You also have where the vinyl floor meets the door sill, a piece of material here that allows you to easily sweep out the trailer. Welcome mats included. Fire extinguisher always by the entry door. Entry step tucks in nice and neat when you're towing. Another stabilizer jack point here in the corner, a step light, an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. Now all the outlets in this trailer will only work when you're plugged into shore power. This is a 30 amp shore power trailer, but we give you an adapter so you can plug it into a 15 or 20 amp outlet at home. Another clearance light. It's always best practice when you're towing a travel trailer to turn your headlights or parking lights on in your tow vehicle, which will illuminate all your clearance lights. Gives you better visibility when you're going down the highway. What that will also do is it powers the wireless backup or driving camera that comes with a monitor that goes inside your vehicle and you can see exactly what's going on behind you as you're driving. Really neat feature. You could also use it for backing up, but that will only work when your parking lights or headlights on. So make sure you have that on and you have a license plate bracket here in the back. And by the way, the backup camera standard on every single traditional Airstream travel trailer. That's Baby Caravel, Flying Cloud, International, Globetrotter, Pottery Barn, and the Classic. LED rear lights here, nice clean uh, back lines here on the trailer, nice ground clearance throughout. Over here is your waste discharge. So on board you have a 17 gallon black waste tank and a 30 gallon gray waste tank. Black handle, gray handle. Black waste is your toilet waste, so your toilet empties into a black tank. There's a gauge inside the trailer that will tell you how much waste you have and you can decide when it's time to discharge. What you do is you take the cap off, take your waste hose out of the storage tube, Colonial Airstream gives you a donut, some gloves, a 90 degree adapter, and a 10 foot waste hose. You clamp that on nice and tight, you screw this into the campground, different thread patterns here. If they're stripped, well, we give you the donut, slip it in, get this locked in nice and tight. And then once you have that locked in, you could discharge your waste. Now, what you do is always empty the black tank first, pull that straight out. That will allow the waste to discharge out of the tank through your waste hose. When that's done emptying, you close the handle, open up the gray waste tank, which is your sink and shower water, and that will help clean and flush out your waste hose. You never wanna leave this open and allow the water to run out because the solids will stay in the tank, and that's how you can really mess up the inside of a tank of a trailer. So you always wanna make best practice, have them closed when it's time to empty, discharge, allow it to flush out. Take it one step further, Airstream includes a black tank flush on this trailer. Take this cap off, stick a regular garden hose up. Don't mix up your freshwater hose, but garden hose. After you empty the black tank, leave the handle open and then hook up a garden hose. Not to run for two, five, 10 minutes, whatever it takes. And that'll help flush out the inside of the tank. Once it's done, shut the water off, disconnect your hose, then close this. And the waste hose, when you're all done, stores nice and neat in this storage tube. We give you here at Colonial Airstream a freshwater drinking hose that hooks directly up to your city water inlet, which has a water pressure regulator built into it. This does not fill your freshwater tank. This bypasses the water tank because there's a check valve in the water pump and supplies water to all your faucets based on the campground's water pressure. You could also use this to fill the freshwater tank, the potable tank, which is 23 gallons on this model, which I'll show you just in a little bit. Outside utility shower with hot and cold water outside. Really nice to hose everything down when you're done using it. Or if you want to wash off your dog or even take a shower outside, you could. 
There's a cable connection here, so you could hook in a uh, cable at a campground, nice and easy here. There's also, what if you're out here at night? All your utilities are in one spot. Well, there's a light out here to illuminate this whole area for you so you can see what's going on back here. Over here is your shore power connection. Is a 25 foot, 30 amp shore power. This is a smart plug, plugs in, tells you you have power going into the trailer. When you're done, you just pull, push these in and unplug it. It's a lot easier than those old twist lock style that never ever gets right. They don't twist it, they don't lock it. And they wonder why their power cords get really hot and melt. This, you don't have to worry about that. We give you a power cord adapter here at Colonial Airstream. So the receptacle you plug into a campground would look just like this, it's 30 amp. But if you wanted to plug this in at home to charge the trailer, or run the fridge, or use your electrical outlets, you could use this adapter and plug it into a regular 15 amp electrical outlet at home. With this, you could not run your air conditioning on board. Uh, you would need a true 30 amp connection to do so. Over here in the wheel well, there is a drip tube for your air conditioning. So any condensation that builds up inside the air conditioning will drip through a tube instead of running down the side, leaving all stains and weather marks on the side of your trailer. Up top, you get the, the King antenna. That's for radio reception and television. There's an antenna booster on the inside. You turn it on. There's two 100 watt solar panels on the roof of the trailer. That's part of that factory option. Uh, we highly recommend that here at our dealership. You know, we would love to see more solar roof, but we understand Airstream utilizes every inch they possibly can to include solar roof. Uh, so they're very mindful of, of not wasting any space. 13,500 B2 air conditioning with electric heat strip on board. You got two more windows here. This one's for the kitchen. This one's gonna be for the bedroom when we get in there. Potable tank of 23 gallons, take the cap off, stick the hose in, allow the tank to fill. There's an air vent here, it allows the air to reach out, uh, relieve out. And it's a loose connection because you don't want to add pressure to the fresh water tank on board, you just want to fill it. You have an 18,000 B2 propane furnace on board here. This is the discharge for it. And then underneath the trailer, there's a low point drain for your fresh water tank so you could drain it down. And then there's also various low point drains for plumbing systems. So for winterization or you want to drain it down when you're done with your trip, you could empty those drains. We have a great orientation here at our dealership. Any of our customers that purchase from our dealership, we schedule a date and time for them to come in the trailer's all clean and prepped and ready, full of propane. You get a hitch lock, you get the RV starter kit, and we go through and teach you how everything works inside this trailer. We get to point out all your low point drains for you. That's a value, very valuable thing that we offer our customers. A lot of times it takes quite a bit of time to go through the trailer. We invite all our customers after the orientation to spend the night at our dealership. So you could run through and try out all the systems that we taught you how to run. And uh, that way, if you have any additional questions, you're still here. The next morning, we can help answer any additional follow-up questions. Gerard Tankless Water Heater on board. This has uh, is propane operation only allows continuous flow of hot water to your faucets. This is not a storage compartment, but it does have a pressure relief valve, which is part of the winterization procedure to drain down the water heater. VIN plate with tire pressure information. Uh, this has important information here as well. Up front here on the boxed frame, so this is not like a C-channel frame, there's a very rigid boxed frame. It's got a special paint on it which has some texture. It's very durable for rocks and chips. But over here we have a quick disconnect port for a portable barbecue grill. Now this is a low pressure grill compatible only. So you want to check the specs on your barbecue grill. We sell one here that is low pressure compatible. But this plugs in, you slip back the little collar here, turn on the gas valve, and this will be permanently attached to your grill. And they only give you a short amount on purpose so you don't do anything silly like try to bring it around and cook underneath your awning and start a fire. Rock guard on the front, the solar stone guards, tethers come up, this lifts up. These little neural knobs lock in place and allows you to open your window three different heights. This window also has an insect screen built into it. And then these corner pieces, because it is a 
rock guard that allows some deflection if debris comes up. You have tempered glass, curved glass behind here. They gap it about this much, so allows that deflection, but sometimes you're gonna get leaves and debris back there, windows might get dirty. So you take a, a screwdriver, turn a quarter turn, these will swing out and slip off a hinge so you could do some maintenance back here. Manual hitch jack on this trailer is a good area. This is where I could talk to you a little bit about like the differences between a Bambi series and a Caravel series, which share the same 16RB, 19CB, 20FB, and 22FB floor plans. There's about 100 differences between a Bambi and a Caravel. Caravel being the more expensive, more upgraded, a little bit heavier trailer. So the Bambi has a manual hitch jack. Caravel is going to have electric hitch jack. Uh, this has a plastic battery box. The Caravel is going to have a metal battery box. The Caravel is going to have stainless steel wrap protectors on the front. It's going to have ducted air conditioning system. It's going to have an inverter system. It's going to have aluminum entry step. It's going to have some umbrella material on the awning. So you can see there's quite a bit of differences. But some people like the Bambi for the price point, its weight, and maybe the decor on the inside, and they want to do some upgrades. So a lot of people wind up doing electric hitch jacks. This one's just a manual. It works well. We give you a hitch lock. It's, uh, it prevents this Demco coupler from lifting up and someone stealing your trailer. But it's a two and five sixteenth inch bowl. This is a trailer breakaway cable. This will be firmly attached to your tow vehicle if the two ever separated in an accident or not hitched properly. This will pull out and it locks the trailer brakes up for you so you, your trailer's not passing you. Uh, this is hooked directly into the battery system of the trailer and uh, if for some reason you ever decided to pull that out just to pull it out for convenience, uh, that's rapidly draining your battery. I mean it will drain the battery in the trailer in a few hours. So it's only meant to be pulled out momentarily or in an emergency situation but it's got to be plugged back in. You get safety chains here, you always crisscross them before you bring them up to your tow vehicle. And then over here, I see it hidden here. There it is. This is a seven way. So your vehicle is going to have to have a seven way receptacle. Hey, turn signals, brake lights, brake controller feed. It also has a charge lead built into it, which is very important that your vehicle has a charge lead hooked up. Plugs into your tow vehicle. Your vehicle is going to either need to have the factory brake controller or an aftermarket brake controller. Wireless, we do the Red Arc controller here. Lots of different brake controllers, but you definitely need that in this trailer's brakes, and you're required to have them operational. Uh, so we do brake controllers here on most vehicles. If the factory option of that vehicle manufacturer offers it, we recommend getting that instead of putting one aftermarket if you can. Propane bottle cover holds two 20 pound propane bottles, which is really convenient because this is the same size that most barbecue grills use and you could just swap these out. You could exchange them in a gas station. Uh, each cylinder weighs 17.2 pounds before you put propane in it. So they weigh about 40 pounds each. Uh, so that's where you get that 500 pound hitch weight. There's a, a nut here that clamps down the bottle cover and this clamp, which clamps down the two propane tanks. You turn the bottles on and then you got a left and right. So right now there's an arrow pointing to this bottle showing that it's empty. It would be green if it was full. Hey, you could shut that bottle off and spin it over to this bottle and turn this one on to operate off the propane there. If you have both bottles on, it will automatically switch over to the next bottle if one bottle goes empty, which is really cool. Make sure you got this firmly attached down before you tow, and you do have to remove the bottle cover before you take the propane bottle tanks out. They're not able to pull through the top. Batteries, so let's talk about batteries. So Airstream builds the trailer, you get this factory solar charging system, or if you don't get the factory solar charging system, there's no batteries. So there's different batteries that you could get from your dealer. You could go very, very basic, which no one does anymore. That would be your standard deep cycle lead acid battery. You could go average battery, which would be AGM, absorbed glass map battery. You could do two of those in this trailer. Uh, they're group 24 series, give you 80 amp hours of power each, 160 amp hours total. But with AGM, you can only use half of that battery capacity, so you have 80 amp hours usable. 
example, most people now go with lithium batteries because these trailers are all lithium ready. They have lithium battery controller and the solar control, everything is lithium ready. You could do two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. We do the Battleborn batteries with the heat. And that will give you 200 amp hours total you could use. You could almost use 100% of that capacity. They charge a lot faster. Uh, they have heat built into them. So you could actually charge them and allow them to charge out in the sun in the winter if you wanted to. Uh, so we recommend getting those. It's all prepped. And then it, it also is prepped for an external solar port. So this one has the optional solar on the roof, but you could also do additional solar panels out here. You will need one or two additional solar controllers if you decide to hook that up. It's prepped for it, but it's not physically connected right now. Underneath the trailer, there is a spare tire. It's a full-size spare tire, just like on the sides. It just has a steel wheel instead of aluminum wheel. Pull a little pin here. This arm drops down. You lift your electric or manual hitch jack up high enough so you can get your tire out. Make sure you check your tire pressure on that while you're checking your tire pressure on your main tires. So that pretty much covers the basics of the outside. What you don't see right now is the roof of the trailer is actually white. It's aluminum just like the body, but it has a coating on it that allows reflection of the sun, keeps the heat down inside, and a great adhesion surface for all your gaskets and seals around all your protrusions through the roof. This trailer has an MSRP price of $74,000. How do we get there? Well, you start off with a base price of $69,200. Destination and fuel surcharge is $2,700, and you have that one option of the solar charging system of $2,100, giving you a grand total of $74,000. Really good value in this trail. You get a lot for your money. Let's go inside. <clears throat> Welcome to this space. This is a great floor plan. For one, it's very open. In the back, you got a toilet and shower that are separate. You got a large wardrobe. You got a center galley kitchen. You got this U-shaped dinette. Folds down into a bed that's 38 by 75. And up front, you got a 54 inch by 80 inch bed in the full panoramic windows. So now you kind of know the lay of the land. Let me dive into the details and go through each and every component on this trailer. We'll start right here by the door. Dry erase board, you got some coat hooks here. You got your step light and your interior lighting. You have an access panel if you ever needed to get to the shower faucet for any repairs. You got a rubber bumper over the entry door if you forget the duck on the way out. Over the door you have a gutter rail so water flying down won't come into the trailer. You have some boot storage here by the door. All the cabinets are made out of pliable with laminate so this is not a sticker. It's not particle board, it's not flake board, it's not melamine. It's Italian light ply. Very lightweight and very durable. Uh, beautiful. Over here on the dinette, we have the ocean interior decor, and they also offer a dune, which is a light gray. And that is the only difference between the two decors. So they have the same bedspread, same curtain, same floor, same laminate on the cabinets, same pillows. It's all the same. What's cool about this dinette, you get a large window here, you get some aluminum blinds over the dinette so you can really control the light. The dinette table unclamps, and there is another clamp underneath here. We'll get to that here, right here on the side. And when you bring that down, that allows the table to slide out. So if you want to get in, it's a lot easier. You can slide the table in and out. You could also spin it, because everybody's different shapes and sizes that will accommodate a lot of different people. And once you get it all set, you put the clamps back on and that keeps it nice and tight. What's another thing about this dinette is that the cushions lift up and you gain you access to additional storage areas that they have. This part of it here is the wheel well. There's an electrical light underneath the dinette and another storage compartment over here. Now, to fold this down into a bed, before we do that, we gotta appreciate these beautiful cushions here. Look at the work that they do. The stitching, they have the air vents in it, a really good quality foam, it's all zipped up in place. So it allows it to not only hold up for a very long time, but if someone ever wanted to reupholster, they could actually duplicate these cushion covers. So to make this into a bed, undo your clamps, and what you first do is slide the table out. You want that clearance and I spin it around and I hook it under here 
and I do the same with the other side. Once you get it hooked under, you slide it back in, you put your clamps back on, top and bottom. Then you take this cushion out here, take this one out here, and now you have like a deep sofa area that you can sit and lounge in. If you wanna make it into an actual bed, these cushions actually fit underneath here, just like that. You could do both of them. They actually spin around that, that leg there. Nice and neat. And you can put this you know, right here if you wanted to. You can lean it against the wall. And now you got another bed. So you could actually sleep two kids or one adult in this bed right here. Up above, we have a fantastic fan and another one in the back over the bathroom. To operate the fan, just spin this over. Select your speed, one, two, or three. And it has a screen that's removable so you can clean the blades. If bugs get stuck in there, you could do that. And then you manually close it. On the Caravel line, it actually has a motorized lid, rain sensor, variable speed control, temperature sensor, has a lot more features. The lights in here have a light switch at the entry door, but you could actually dim it down if you just wanted one element or two, or just have one particular fi fixture all the way off. There's two speakers on board, one here, one back there. You get your 13,500 B2 Dometic air conditioning with electric heat strip. You, could, you have just a fan speed setting, or you can have the cool setting, three different speeds there, and optional heat. You get your thermostat here. You could dump air straight down. You could push air out the sides. Front and back, you can push air in and out. And there's also a filter that you do have to clean. People forget to clean these things. They get clogged up with lint and it overworks your air conditioning as the major, most common thing that causes air conditioning to fail is not enough airflow. And to bring the dinette back up and make it into a lounge, it's quite easy. You've got these little tapered pieces that go up against the wall. Same thing on this side. See that tapered end, and this has a square end. Goes right up against the wall here. You take your little inserts. They have Velcro on them, keeps them from dancing around when you're driving. And then you get the table out, you undo both your clamps, spin it, get one side out, get the next side out, lock it in place, lock it in place. Very easy, put all your sheets and everything, you store them underneath. Center galley kitchen here, two burner gas cooked up, electronic ignition, both the same BTUs. You have plenty of wall surface here. You can do 3M command strips for different th things that you want to put up there. GFCI protected electrical outlet, task lighting over here. You got two roof locker storage. Over here is a Clarion stereo system, which is Bluetooth. You have USB here on the side. They just roll down when you're done. You got your window here for the kitchen. Check out this sink. It's actually a pretty big sink. Stainless steel, regular household metal faucet instead of plastic faucets. Got some sink covers. Some people use them as cutting boards. If you're splashing all around, you got this little guard here on the side. Underneath, you got a trash pail. The furnace is underneath there, that's 18,000 B2. We have a wireless backup camera monitor we talked about before, this goes in your tow vehicle. Silverware organizer that fits in here. I have some things like uh, the remote control and outlet tester in here. And then you also have storage underneath that. Over here is a regular microwave. If you go to the Caravel, they ha actually have an option for a convection microwave, but this is just a standard microwave on the Bambi. You got some storage here. Another one over here, you can put some stuff in, tin foil, thin items. Battery charger with all your breakers and fuses, 12 volt, AC, DC, everything's labeled in there. Battery charger portions underneath it, the little fan it kicks on. Smoke, uh, sorry, that is propane and CO detection built in. That's hardwired to the battery system of the trailer. There's smoke detectors here in the ceiling and that has a nine volt battery you gotta change every six months. Refrigerators, 4.1 cubic foot. Got a nice amount of space here, adjustable shelves, door holders, magnet to keep the freezer portion up and open. There's a vent grate on the side that allows this cabinet to breathe a little bit. You get a 12 volt television on a swivel arm. It's got a little lock here that 
locks it in place when you're towing. There's also an antenna booster. We saw an antenna on the roof. You could put that on, program the TV, get whatever over to air reception you have. You also need that on to run your stereo. Another outlet here on the side, that 18,000 B2 furnace, you operate it by turning it on on the top and then setting your temperature here on the side. There's a furnace duct down here on the floor. There's one in the bathroom. Your tanks are heated using the furnace. So as long as that furnace is on, it's going to bring the temperature inside your tank 7 to 10 degrees warmer than outside ambient temperature. I got your bed pillows in here. This floor, you unscrew it, lifts up, gives you access to the water pump. Outside utility shower, a lot of plumbing connections in there. Uh, that's a service access point. You have a light in this cabinet. There's also a QR code. So Airstream is very mindful. They put together all these service tech tips, little videos, little guides. You can scan this with your phone. It actually brings you to the page on the Airstream's website that will give you extra information for some of the stuff that's in here. You'll see these QR codes throughout the Airstream trailers. You can hang your shirts in here. This is uh, another shelf, but we have the Airstream owner's manual bag uh, in this compartment here. And then this is the second fantastic fan that the trailer has. Moving along, in the bedroom, 54 by 80. It's a pretty big size bed. Has this uh, privacy curtain that pulls all the way across the hall. And then when you're driving, it actually snaps in place over here. What you can't see is there's a furnace duct down on this side. This window becomes an emergency exit window. Check this out. <clears throat> so you pull these red handles and this window hinges out and you can climb out the trailer just in case that entry door is blocked. But it still operates as a regular like venting window. You have blackout curtains that pull across here, blackout curtains that pull all the way across the front, the front window that opens two spotlights underneath the bed. You got some more roof locker storage here at the head of the bed, one on each side. You have this area here. This is good for like your books and your iPads, whatever you're gonna need in bed. You get the big shelf here that you put your stuff on. You have USB so you could charge your phone here on the side. The light switch for the bedroom lights and another electrical outlet. And then hidden down here on the floor, there's another storage compartment there. You can put all your shoes in there. You can put magazines in that one. What's cool about this one, and this is the only Bambi that does this, this floor plan, the bed lifts up and it gains you access to the water heater if that ever needed to be serviced, to this big bulk area with these plastic bins it comes with. This door opens all the way. You could even unclip it and leave it open all the time if you wanted to. I've seen people put cat boxes and stuff underneath here. We could do whatever you want. But it's got this big door here. Keeps it nice and neat. When you walk in the trail, you don't see underneath your bed. And they give you a premium mattress, pillow top, memory foam mattress. They do a good job with their mattress, mattresses. You can compare that to a lot of different RVs. And a lot of times people just throw those mattresses away and they buy one. Airstream gives you one that we think you're gonna keep. You're gonna enjoy it. Down here underneath the bed, there's a battery disconnect switch. So for long-term storage, you could turn this off and that turns the battery system off to the whole entire trailer. So if you left something on, it's not gonna drain your battery. Let's head back to the bathroom now. What's nice about this bathroom is you got a gap here at the top. So you could use the fan here to discharge stale air or steam. It's got a flush handle so you don't get caught up on it. You could leave this door open if you wish and really opens up the floor plan. You can see from front to back. In here we got a porcelain toilet. That box that the toilet sits on, that's the black tank enclosure. It's a foot flush toilet, so you put your foot on the pedal, put it down a little bit, fills the bowl, all the way flushes the bowl. So you do have control yourself on how much water you're going to use per flush. So you're not forced X amount per, you know, per flush. It's up to you what you want to put in the bowl per flush. You have a light switch for the bathroom. You have your controls for your tankless water heater. So you could dial in what temperature you want. So we have it set at 124 degrees. So you turn your faucet all the way in the hot setting and that will come out 124 degrees. If it's too hot for you, you could turn the temperature down. So it's not recommended to try to do the mixing at the faucet where you mix hot and cold water because it might not allow enough flow for the water heater to kick on. You set your temperature here. Your battery percentage you can monitor here. Your fresh water percentage, gray and black. What's nice is percentage one 
to a hundred instead of thirds and quarters like most RVs. So you really get a precise reading of what's going on inside your tank. You're not guessing if it says two thirds, if you're right at the top of that two thirds and your tank's gonna overflow. Really good system here. You can also turn on your water pump from here. The water pump pumps the system up to pressure. Once it pressurizes, it shuts down. Once it feels a drop in pressure, when you kick on a faucet, it's gonna turn the pump back on. When you're hooked up to city water at a campground, you don't need your water pump on unless they have low water pressure. What you would do in that situation is you fill up your fresh water tank, then hook up the city water, turn on the pump, and combine both of them will give you pressure that you like. This is the Victron Energy Solar Charge Display. So this will tell you how many watts are coming into the trailer off the solar panels. We're in the building right now, so it says zero. Down on the floor is your furnace duct. So this air will be nice and toasty and warm. Right by the toilet when you come in here the first thing in the morning. You got room here for your toilet paper and your toiletries. You got a little shelf here on the side. This opens up. You got a toilet paper holder or more storage. A separate sink here with a really nice faucet. Back window opens all the way around. You got a mirror here so you could magnify things or you could just look at regular. And then I'm gonna step into the shower. This has a glass shower door. Uh, it's really nice. Earlier models had like those accordion doors. Uh, this is an upgrade that they did recently. <clears throat> now, normally you take your shoes off when you go in the shower. I'm five feet nine, but with my boots on and five nine, I got plenty of headroom here and plenty of volume. Volume's nice because when you're showering, you're moving your arms around, you're wiggling around, but it also has a little seat here if you're taller and you can't stand up all the way you could sit on the seat you got your drain over there you got a little pocket here you can store some shampoos you can put some more stuff up here you got your diverter hot and cold water you could take this off you could uh, change the the spray pattern and then another cool thing is like you're gonna have a lot of wet towels and light items you want to hang down if you go swimming you want to get your bathing suit dry the little clothesline here, you lock that in place and you can allow things to dry in this nice sealed compartment. Maintenance you gotta do, you just gotta caulk some of the seams. There's not a lot of them, but uh, you know, do have to do your maintenance. And then also it's very important before you tow the trailer that you do a walkthrough and you make sure everything is buttoned down, your shower door is locked, your water pump's off. A lot of things to do. In the, in the owner's manual, there is a checklist. So we give you the orientation, it's complimentary. We try to get you through most of the items in the trailer, but we do recommend reading the owner's manual to understand all the cautions and warnings that there might be. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour today of the all new 2023 Airstream Bambi 22FB here at Colonial Airstream. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. You can visit us on our website at colonialairstream.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have some great content if you're into those short videos. We do a lot of YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you find us there. We'll leave links in the description. And again, I'm Patrick Botticelli. I work here at Colonial Airstream. I've been here for 25 years, and I do sell them. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks for joining us today.